wanting to grow your business, wanting a better relationship, wanting to improve your health and fitness. External desires are the catalyst for internal change. I know that if you listen to this podcast, even if you just stumbled your way here today, you are not listening to this by accident. You probably are someone who has really big desires for your life. And that means you are someone who is meant to be on a journey of constant evolution. I want to continue this conversation that I started to have in last week's episode where I was really talking about how what I wish more people would ask even if they also ask, how did you do it? How did you create the things you've created? How did you grow this business, this community? I wish more people asked the question, who did you have to become? Because when I look at the journey to building powerhouse women, and if you haven't listened to that episode yet, I really went into the different phases and who I had to become in each of them. That's where, when I look back, I can see those were those moments where the massive expansion happened, even if it didn't, it didn't happen right in the moment of the, who I was becoming. But six months later, I was a different person. I was unrecognizable. And so I want to go a little bit deeper into this idea of the difference between internal and external expansion. And I have expansion on the brain because I'm deep in the planning process for our expanders retreat. And so it's had me reflect a lot on my own journey of expansion. And I've talked a lot about this on the podcast, the whole gap series, how I'm in the middle of what I feel just by the size of it is probably one of the biggest, most profound expansions that I've ever been through. But I'm in the part where I'm still doing the becoming work that in six months from now will show up in my external results. So it's important to distinguish what it looks like when you're doing the internal expansion work because it's so easy to overlook, especially if you're like me and you love to be achieving, you love to be pursuing goals, you love to be working toward that next external result, the one we can see, it doesn't feel as sexy to slow down and be doing this internal expansion work. But if we don't, what ends up happening is if we don't take advantage of these seasons where you're really being asked to do the internal deeper work and you just keep focusing on the external expansion, which looks like you know, putting in the work, doing the do of your business, and maybe just doubling down and trying to do more or trying to make more calls or, you know, make more social media posts. All of that is necessary. Action is necessary. We don't just sit around and manifest our way and never take action. But if we only want to work on the external stuff and we want to skip the sometimes, okay, not sometimes, always more uncomfortable internal expansion work, then what happens is the results take longer. I think they're less sustainable and they're not from a place of having become the person who, if everything was taken away tomorrow, you know, you could do it again. So the analogy that I wrote down is it's almost like if you're really thirsty and you know, the quick fix is to get a glass of water and maybe you have access to like one glass of water, but that is a quick fix, something readily accessible versus how long it takes to dig and build a well that is a constant source of water. And that was the analogy in my mind that really connected with this because while, you know, in that moment, especially if you can imagine, like I live in Arizona and it's hot AF right now, when you're really thirsty, like you're, you don't want to take the time to build a freaking well you want the quick fix. And sometimes that's okay, but we also want to double down and be focusing on the internal expansion, which is that building of the well, where you now know yourself to be capable of drawing, you know, water in this example is like the equivalent of drawing upon, you know, the energy, the resources, the knowledge that you need in order to sustain the results that you want and produce the next level of results. And so I've been in this season 
And I think a lot of you have also been in this season as well, from what I've heard, where I'm just really sitting in the external or the internal expansion. Not a lot's happening on the surface. In fact, like I was talking about last in the last couple episodes, if someone were to look at my life, it might even look like a contraction, meaning there's, you know, this lessening of the external results. And on the inside, what it feels like is, you know, if you think about a contraction, it feels like there's this pressure. And pressure isn't always a bad thing, but pressure also can force us to confront and look at things that maybe we wouldn't have otherwise. And so in these moments, and I know a lot of you are going through them as well, if we can take a step back and and look at them as what I talked about a couple of weeks ago, these surprising kind of unconventional signs that you are actually ready for a big up level, realize that the up level is going to come on the other side of doing the internal expansion work along with the external, the actions, the doing, that's where you have the most sustainable success. That's where you can create very quantum leap type results. But it doesn't look quantum when you're in the process of doing the internal deeper work. So the other thing I want to say before I talk a little bit about, at least for me, what okay, what does it actually mean to do this internal expansion work? That's probably the question on your minds is that I think it's important to acknowledge that wanting external results, wanting to grow your business, wanting a better relationship, wanting to improve your health and fitness, external desires are the catalyst for internal change. It's actually a part of how you're designed. I know that if you listen to this podcast, even if you just stumbled your way here today, you are not listening to this by accident. You probably are someone who has really big desires for your life. And that means you are someone who is meant to be on a journey of constant evolution. And that means you're on a journey of constant internal expansion. So the external desires are valuable. And I think sometimes it can get caught in this conversation where, you know, we can almost demonize wanting the external things and make it seem like, oh, you're, you're just more spiritual. If you just want the internal transformation, look, I live in a world where I have external desires and those external desires are what forces me into making internal changes and doing this deeper in internal work that maybe I wouldn't be that motivated to do otherwise. So I think it's important to realize that the external desires are really important. And if we didn't have them, we may not fully realize our potential in this lifetime, but we can't just focus on, you know, how to make those those goals happen. So the desires are important, but the second piece is I want you to think about, I guess I'm just like on this water analogy kick. Maybe I need to hydrate more, but there's other analogy that I thought about in, in terms of understanding how these two energies, the external desires and that expansion versus the internal expansion is imagine that your same glass of water, maybe you built your well now and you go to fill up this glass of water but the glass of water is only big enough to hold 12 ounces of water. So maybe your thirst, your desires have grown and you want really, really big things, but you haven't done the internal work to expand the vessel in this case, the glass to be able to hold more water. So it doesn't matter. You could, you could pump the, you know, the well, I'm imagining one of those, I don't know, like old timey wells where you have to manually pump to get the water to come up. I don't know where that that came from, but that's the picture in my mind. Just go with me. And you're pumping so hard. You know, you're physically exerting the effort to bring more water, more of the external desires to the surface. But you don't you haven't done the internal work to expand the container that's going to hold all of that effort and all of the external results that the effort produces. So instead, it just kind of spills onto the ground. And so that's kind of how I think about the way that I work in the in-between of understanding the external desires are absolutely what gets me into motion. I hope that my desires always continue to evolve and change as I do, because then it gives me the next area to go to work on my own expansion. But 
if I'm only wanting to chase the external results and the things that are more celebrated and more, you know, they're just more visible on social media. You can't really see someone's internal transformation on social media. I mean, you can see the way it reflects on the outside, but you can't see resilience. You see evidence of resilience or other things that are built within people when they do the internal work, but you can't see it. It's not as celebrated, but it's necessary in order to be able to hold more of the external things that we desire. So what does internal expansion actually look like? I feel like this is one of those things where, you know, when people will throw out these phrases like, oh, do the work. I remember (laughs) early on in personal development kind of being like, great. Okay. Day one in my journal, do the work. And then I'm like, okay, what's next? Like, what is the work? And at least for me, this is what the work doing the internal expansion work has really looked like. This is especially what it looks for, looks like for me in this very season. And I'm speaking to this because again, a lot of you have shared with me in DMS or on our text community that you are also feeling like you're in a season of this profound change. There's just this profound energy of change and it might feel uncomfortable. You might also feel that sense of pressure being put on you or like things are contracting. Maybe business is drying up or, you know, relationships are evolving and, you know, things just aren't, they're just not working the way that they used to. All of that matched with the desire for the next level is creating this perfect storm to have you look inward to do the inner expansion necessary to really step into the next level. And so for me right now, and I've been talking about this for about the last, almost the last year, really for me, this started last October. Right now we're just beginning September. So it's almost a full year of doing less. And I can hear my fellow overachievers, my fellow people who do not like to slow down. I can just hear you cringing. Okay. It's like an, an audible cringe. I can hear it. And I really fought this for a long time, but until I started to slow down and realize, as I've I've shared this before, that being still my stillness, isn't the same as laziness that if I do less, it doesn't make me lazy. It doesn't make me irrelevant. I'm not going to fall off of people's radar. If I'm not out there as much doing as much of the, like the events and speaking and being on other people's podcasts, that the journey that I have been on was one that was really asking me to go inward. And that required me to do less for a season. Now I'm still very active in my business. I'm still growing my business and serving my clients, but I'm not doing a lot of the extra stuff. So I pulled back on a lot of that. The inner expansion work after I got still then started to look like really paying close attention to where I'm triggered. Oof. Okay. This has been really uncomfortable because I didn't realize how much I was using the doing to avoid feeling. I loved chasing after the next goal, AKA doing the external expansion work. I didn't like feeling my feelings and digging into where I felt angry or sad or where I felt a deep sense of grief over things in, you know, in my life that I was ready to outgrow. And it wasn't until I started to slow down and allowed those feelings to come to the surface and started working with amazing therapists and coaches and practitioners to really help me support my expansion on like a cellular level. Because I think that Yes, I could have kept going the way I was going. It wasn't, I wasn't at a point of burnout or anything like that. But I think if I had kept going in the direction that I was going and started chasing bigger goals, I do think I, I was at risk to hit burnout. I think I was at risk to not feel well if I had continued to go in the direction I had been going. And so I slowed down. I started to pay attention to where I was triggered, where uncomfortable emotions came to the surface. I started to learn how to process those, actually process them and, you know, sit and journal and, and understand what those uncomfortable feelings were trying to show me and invite me to, to look at. And ultimately each trigger and there's triggers actively right now that are showing up 
each one is pointing me toward another area where I have an opportunity to expand internally. So it, it doesn't feel like I'm in a holding pattern or anything like that. I, I don't think I have to completely transform internally before the external, the doing can resume, but there's just been a more of a balance of internal expansion as the foundation of the external expansion, the doing. So digging into that, slowing down, being willing to really look at where I'm triggered and what it's showing me about my patterns and things that ultimately I just don't think are meant to come with me into the season that I'm going next. And that stuff is hard. It is hard to break some of those patterns. I mean, I'm talking about patterns that have been a part of me for the 40 years that I've been on this planet, or at least my conscious years, you know, maybe I adopted them when I was like six or seven, but for the majority of the 40 years that I've been on this planet. So that takes a little while to shift. It takes a period of integration where I'm noticing the pattern, then I'm being aware of it and hype, you know, hyper aware in my daily life, shifting it, choosing something new. And then, you know, it takes a while for that new habit and way of operating to integrate. So a lot of that, a lot around my triggers, I'm going to record a whole episode, the next one on what I'm learning. <laughs> I'm just going to give it to you straight. What my biggest triggers are teaching me right now. And all of this all of this stuff that, like I said, has been a part of me and my makeup and what's made me successful for my whole life, but how I'm actually working with this energy of understanding that it's not supposed to come with me into the next season if I'm fully going to expand into who I'm meant to be. And then the last thing that I put for what my inner expansion looks like right now, and this is actually something that I want to preface it by saying, um, I was sharing on a call today with our six figure school group that a big part of this season in the stillness has also been understanding the value of aloneness and what time alone really could show me where, you know, because I had been more social before and just going to more events, supporting people, being on more podcasts, always connecting with people. A lot of what I was also not doing was I wasn't carving out as much time to be alone in working with some of these triggers and patterns that I was seeing. And so the third piece of what inner expansion looks like right now has been seeking out those next level expanders and like people that are showing me what's possible, but it's balanced with understanding that time alone is ultimately a big part of it as well. And that's something I'm going to share a little bit more of what you know, this time alone and understanding like even why time alone triggered me and what it's showing me about where I was maybe outsourcing some of my validation or some of my worthiness to these external sources. And all of this to say, I share this all the time that, you know, I'm, I'm coming to you live from right in the middle of these lessons. I don't have this all completely figured out. I want to capture it while I'm in the moment and really leaning into this expansion because even I forget, I won't remember all of this when I'm on the other side and when I'm, you know, getting to experience the external expansion that I know I'm working toward, I'll forget how uncomfortable it's been to sit in this internal, I can't even say it anymore, internal expansion phase and sit with my triggers and look at my need for control and look at all these things that I know can't come with me where I'm going next. So I hope that this serves you as well. If nothing else, it's going to help me remember the next time I go to expand that yes, the external desires and the next level things that I want are there and they're within me for a reason. But one of the biggest things that they serve, one of the biggest purposes they serve rather, is to point me directly to the internal expansion work that needs to happen along with the doing and the achieving in order to create success that's more sustainable. Because that's ultimately what I want. That's what I want for you. And as much as I would love to tell you, there's like just this three easy steps to creating everything you've ever desired. The truth is that once you get to levels where you're uprooting really deep rooted patterns, that external 
desire is going to require an equal match of internal transformation in order to make it happen. But there is one thing that I know, and that is that it may be really uncomfortable, but you are totally strong enough to handle it.